on One Day Leader. We look down memory lane and view the legacy our six leaders leave behind. And finally, we announce our One Day Leader. Dumelang Tobela, South Africa, and welcome to the final episode of One Day Leader Season 3. My name is Dumelo Motodwani, and yes, Today, we are announcing the winner for the season. And once again, this week, we have a jam-packed episode just for you. So make sure that you don't touch that dial. But please note again that due to unforeseen circumstances, unfortunately, leader number four, Jablanis Bia, will no longer be able to participate in this show. But we still have an action-packed final lineup for you for tonight with two contestants who will be running for the title of One Day Leader. Also, I want to advise you again that um, our two leaders are here. They're waiting, vying for their title of One Day Leader Season 3. And they are leader number five, Samantha Baynon. And of course, the gentleman, leader six, Sh uh, Octavia Shabang. Well, please share all your comments on who's going to win this competition on our social media pages. You can go to our Facebook page, which is One Day Leader SA, our Twitter account, which is at One Day Leader SA, and do hashtag One Day Leader. Now, instead of sharing their vision statements for tonight, we decided to have all the contestants share this experience and how it has impacted on their lives. And we'll start this one with leader number one, Swanelo Fogas. What made me into One Day Leader is that I wanted to be groomed as a leader, to be mentored, to go and see South Africa because I'm from the East Rand and I've always only been limited to what I see and what I read. And so being on One Day Leader allowed me to really see things such as maybe the Z Shop Centre, go and see Yaske River in Alexandra. The greatest challenge for me would be the debate, you know, because I got you knowing that I'm a good public speaker and you know, you get here and you're so confident in yourself. What I'd like to say to Chabulani is that I'm not focusing on women. What I'm saying is that women are often sidelined. Learning to speak much slower and to calm down was a challenge. My first impression of the show <laughs> was that um, when I met the fellow leaders, I was like, wow, South Africa has potential. I, I'm a media studies student and I always thought I just want to work in media studies, but I've learned that I actually want to work in leadership and volunteerism and philanthropy as I grow. I think Octavia is going to win one day leader because I think we've all seen, even the viewers can testify. The reason why I wanted to be a part of One Day Leader, I saw the first season when I was about to complete my studies in university. So I thought to myself, no, it would be a very good thing to be a part of. I just wanted to push myself to see how far can I go. Because, you know, when you've, you're already excelling in the space that you're at, there isn't much growth that is there. I think I learned a, a lot about just the whole preparation and the setup and what, what it really takes. And also just being in the same space with other um, contestants, where now even normal conversations were not normal because, you know, you just be pushed intellectually uh, in terms of whatever reasoning that you come up with. Can, can, I can I answer you? Can I answer you? Can I answer? Can I answer? To promote domestic can I Answer. And that will increase okay. by 20 Number one, number one, I, I spoke about factors of supply and demand. Being elim eliminated first um, really sucks. Okay, so tonight the contestant who gets to stay is Natasha. Sasiposenko, see, unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you. It just teaches you that life happens. You could do things right, but there could be variables that are outside of your control based on, I think, attitude and resilience. Um, would be Octavia in the sense that looking at how he has come from the back and was able to fight and I think going forward when, when we speak about leaders it's, it's about you know, sustenance and the ability to the, the staying power. And this boy is leader number six at One Day Leader and this woman over here gave up her life to be employed so I could be here. I hadn't watched One Day Leader before. I hadn't seen what it, it was all about. So I think what I'd expected it to be and what it actually was were two very different things, I suppose, because when you're on the outside looking on the inside, it's different to when you're on the inside, actually. My challenge for me the most was sort of um, having to compromise a lot of who I am. 
to, to sort of bring about what was needed of me. I actually took a lot of time to apologize because I think I needed to really sit and reflect on what had happened. I think the first challenge that I experienced were petty little things like makeup and clothes and that kind of things, but I got over that and I was able to move forward. And then it got to a little bit more serious things like living in a house with the other leaders where people are constantly speaking about each other, where you can't even walk out the room without being scared that, oh, what's going to be said about me when I leave? Because the actual realization is that it's a competition. Octavia feels hungry. Get Jabu. Obviously, Jabu wants to be the last man standing. So if you can get knocked out, then for top two, they need a guy. And that'll be him. If you didn't engage with a certain leader about speak, speaking to them about someone else, count it as a disadvantage on your part because you ended up feeling like you're on the outside knowing nothing about what's going on on the inside. So you, you had to engage somewhat. One day leader taught for me to do is to know exactly what I want, know exactly how I'm willing to get what I want and not to stray from that. So if I want to achieve a certain thing and there's certain avenues that could help me achieve that, if those things are gonna compromise the things or my values or principles, I should not engage. Fortunately, leader number three, Natasha, has been eliminated, of course, from today's competition. Being eliminated for me was bittersweet. It was bitter in that, of course, it's a competition. You want to make it until the end, but it was sweet, sweet, at, in that I, I got to relieve myself of the stress and the extra emotion and all those emotions that I was feeling all at once that I had never felt before that I couldn't deal with because I mean I got to a point where I was physically sick. Now um, Natasha could not join us because she's not feeling well and wish her a very speedy recovery. I think Octavia is going to win. Octavia is that person or if he's not that person he puts himself out there as that person very well. The reason why I entered One Day Leader is because I watched season two. I remember seeing people like Sanda Ngama. Delivering such powerful vision statements and actually going and doing weekly tasks and engaging um, with the youth, engaging with different people in society and in different communities. And I said to myself, I could challenge myself um, at being in the forefront of change and action. I believe in the characteristics that make up Ubuntu and create an interconnectivity amongst all South Africans. My purpose is to be a servant to my people. The first impression I got when coming to One Day Leader, I remember we had a workshop preparing for our first debate, preparing for our first task, getting our, our legacy briefing. You know, I like being challenged and I was challenged um, in the forefront of all my leadership qualities and abilities on the show of One Day Leader. The one thing that I learned about Jablani Sibia is that I need to be content in order to be consistent. I believe I showed consistency on the show and that is when I was content. I also learned that uh, I, care. I care. I care when I engage and that's very important because once I do engage and I care, I give it my all. Who is going to win one day leader? Um, I know who's going to win it and it's going to be Jabulani Benson Sibia. One Day Leader wasn't anything that I expected. Um, there was a side to it which um, I was unprepared for and that I think would be TV reality. I think I've learned to become more patient uh, with media and being actively involved in politics already outside of the show. Um, it felt like journalists hounding me all the time. So it's something that tested me consistently. The biggest thing that uh, was really awesome for me was the fact that I didn't change as a person. I think I've grown in terms of articulating myself in a very small amount of time. It's also been a, a journey to work with Abandu Bamnyama strictly. Um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's something I've always spoken about, but to actually be in that context at a national level, because I only know it in terms of my own community, I only know it in terms of student political activism, the SRC. Um, but at this level, when you're dealing with media, when you're dealing with government, which is now being run by a particular group of people, 
And I think that's a great thing. I think it's been a, a learning curve to, to be able to work with those people given the perceptions they have of you before you've even spoken to them because you are a white person. The one thing that I'll take home with me is to be resilient, um, to have a thick skin, to have a backbone, um, because leadership requires that of you. I would say myself, I would like to be the first female that wins this. Can I, can I just offer to try to speak to her okay. and try to salvage that relationship? But I don't want to win on those grounds. I want to win because I know that I am the leader that people can follow. I wanted to put my leadership to the test and see what kind of tangible difference that I could make as an individual, uh, given a platform big enough to make a big impact. Uh, I wanted to prove not only to myself, but to those around me that my kind of leadership is timeless. I first thought it was a debate show, but I learned it's more of a journey of evolution as an individual where you go through stages, you face challenges, but you need to grow, evolve and adapt to become a better you so you can actually be the leader that the future needs. To, that the future needs. All I had to offer before was I had a lot of confidence and I was very, I was very sure that I could get somewhere. But I've understood through One Day Leader that it takes a lot more than confidence. You have to have the ability to just get back up even when it looks really bad. And you also have, the, you have to have the ability to put others first and do what is needed. So uh, in terms of that, I've grown in being able to depend on others, but also being able to dig deep and find my own resolve to go on even when it looks bad. My hottest experience here at One Day Leader this season so far has been trying to come out of my shell because not many people know that I'm actually a shy person. Um, but there was times where um, I had to communicate with people even though it was tough for me. Um, I found myself in situations where I had to be confrontational but I'm not necessarily like that. I believe that I'm gonna win one day leader, not because I'm smart, I'm not smarter than anybody. Uh, I don't deserve it more, but I want it more than anybody else. And I'm willing to work as hard as it takes to just work on my shortcomings uh, and cover the, the gaps that I do have in, in terms of whether it be information gaps, whether it be a career gaps that they might have that I don't. I'm willing to work that much harder and I want it more than they do. Oh boy, what a journey this has been for our candidates. And as noted, please keep voting for the winner for the season. Because remember, lines close at quarter past five this very evening. So keep voting for either leader five, Samantha Baynon, or leader six, Octavia Shabab. Now we welcome back our judges to One Day Leader. Judges, it's our final episode. We have to announce our winner tonight. How are you feeling, Shak? Excited. I'm really excited. I'm excited to hear about the growth and development um, that some of our candidates have gone through. And also just, you know, it's been an, it's been an incredible season full of surprises, yeah. full of shockers. And, uh, you know, just being able to have a moment to relive most of that is really great. Absolutely. And yourself, Catherine, welcome back. Thank you. It's, it's wonderful to be here. It's really, it's an exciting episode. And I think that um, along with everything that Shaka has already said, the important thing is the leadership lessons that have been learnt by all of the contestants as well as the viewers at home. And I think everyone takes that away with them after the season. Absolutely. Thank you so much to our resident judges. Now we've also invited two guest judges for this week who you are very familiar with. Now they have sponsored the prize for this season. And first we welcome back Yershin Pele, who is the chairperson of the NYDA. Welcome back, sir. Wonderful to be back. Now we have our top two. We have a lady dressed in red and we have our gentleman over there. But, but do you think these two reflect the sort of leadership that we need in the country from our youth? Most definitely. Uh, just reading some of the messages on social media. Uh, certainly you seem to have motivated, uh, inspired and educated uh, many of the young people in the country. Uh, and uh, South Africa is eager to know uh, which of you has in fact emerged 
uh, as the next one day leader. Absolutely, we're so eager to find out. And of course, we'll do so at the end of the episode. But we also welcome back to the program, Ms. Linda Ben, the president of Junior Chamber International. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank Are you, you anticipating who the winner will be? I'm actually so excited. My stomach is actually tumbling down. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine. Yes. But thank you both so much for joining us right here on One Day Leader. Now, after the break, we reveal what the legacy that our candidates will be leaving behind as a collective for One Day Leader Season 3. Stay tuned. Welcome back to One Day Leader Season 3. And yes, this is our very final episode for the season where we will be announcing the winner. But first things first, now the candidates were asked which community that they would want to go back to to leave their legacy for the season. Now they chose the community of Bramfley in Ranfontein where they visited Itudeng High School for the episode on access to education. Remember that one? Yes, that's one. Well, let's see what they got up to when they got there. Us as the top six um, this week are doing a legacy project and a legacy project for One Day Leader South Africa is leaving that mark or an imprint um, uh, at an organization or at the school that we've done throughout the 13 weeks. Um, we got to fall in love with um, Ituteng High School in Ranfontein, which was the access to education task where Tuanelo was task leader. And we found a, lo a love and a mark imprint that we can leave at this high school. It's really exciting to have everybody here, the, the entire top six. It's a pity Hong and Natasha can't be here today, but we look forward to seeing her tomorrow. We know Lena is all about leadership and touching lives. And I I know she's got her own element that she's going to bring, which is exciting, really. Yeah. The six candidates got together to devise a plan for their legacy project. What are we eating? Uh, so so what's, what's the plan for today? First thing, go to Ramfontein and meet with the principal. And then maybe we should interview some people from the community, see what they think about yeah. education. As well. Yeah, seeing as the community library thing we're doing is for everyone, not just high school learners. Okay. okay Let's cool. make this happen. Let's go. Okay. One, two, three. Legacy! Now there, and the sandwiches are finished. They made their way to Ranfontein, where they will make an impact on the lives of the young people at Ituteng High School. Zulana A. Ituteng High School, Ranfontein, to speak to the deputy principal, Obaba O. Makalen, about the legacy projects that we want to propose to the school to transform um, one of the classrooms or the areas uh, to become a study center. So we just want to negotiate Naya, get some buy-in. And how can I help you today? What we're trying to do is we want to create an initiative that will encourage reading both in school but also in the community. Um, so ba uh, what we need is just to come up with a way of maybe creating a multi-resource center that can be utilized by everyone. That is really getting me excited. <laughs> because really, uh, we really need a resource center in terms of books. We really do need it. Most of the books that you see here, it was donations from different people. Most of the learners around here, there are those who are willing, forever willing to be helpful to the community. It's going to be easy to get them. And it's also going to be easy to say the person who will be responsible for the library will ensure that the learner great heads do what they intend, what they plan to do. Our vision as a unit, as a top six, is to see this resource centre do more than just be there for information purposes, but we aim to inspire the kids to understand the power of education. And we want to spread that power of education not just into the school, but out into the community. So it should be used as a weapon to improve self and your own lifestyle. And we're about to make our way out into the community. Um, we want to mobilize members of the community to take part in, in our program tomorrow, which is basically the refurbishment of the classroom so that we can convert it into a resource center, a library, and so on. Let's just spread out and try and cover as many people as we can. The library. Um, Salmon. I'm thinking, yeah, let's go, us three. Okay, and then I'll go with job. All right. As the candidates engage the community, they hope they will be welcomed with warmth. 
So, 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 the leaders got a positive response from the community. So what role will they play in impacting on the youth? The plans for tomorrow is we're starting at uh, the Rotary Club in the East Rand to get the books for the foundation for the reading room. We're very excited to make a move and a mark in the community and um, to actually give an impressive uh, stance from education to the community as well as the high school. That's exactly what our leaders got up to. And don't forget to keep voting for your favorite leader. SMS the leader 5 or leader 6 in our SMS line, which is 34020. Now, after the break, we find out how the learners from Itudeng High School responded to their new library. Stay tuned. Watching One Day Leader Season 3, and my name is Dumelo Mototwani. Now, we're coming to you live from our SABC Henley Studios right here in Auckland Park, Johannesburg. And tonight, we're announcing our winner for One Day Leader Season 3. The title could either go to leader number five, Samantha Baynon, or it could go to leader number six, Octavia Shabab. We'll keep voting on 34020. Now, our candidates are at Bramfley in Ranfontaine, where they've, of course, created a library for the learners at Itudeng High School. Let's see how the learners received it. It's day two at Itudeng High School, where the leaders have collected paints and other accessories to start their project. <laughs> Um, smelling paratini, which is a figure a bit later, and Unatash Riaza, uh, who's from the Eastern Cape, uh, also Lady Lama Donation, Yamapu, so Smele Yena, and from Manje, so move Lama supplies, so I take Yile to a classroom. So again, the lens is on a corner Manje, uh, Nchablili Akulu, Nyatame within the Soyans available, so coming to Jim Below Zaban. So we've got three colors, yes, that's right, it's definitely <laughs> yellow, yellow, yellow with the blue, it's cool, here, orange, yes. Cream. Yes. Okay. And then at the back they're doing hands. Yeah. Same okay. paint on the back there. Okay. Well, that cool it works. The contestants get into the logistics. I'm excited to be back to be a part of the legacy project. Um, the legacy project to me, I think it's it's going to have a big impact because okay, fine, they had a library already, but it was kind of dull and it didn't look like many people were using it in any case. And we've also got some books, some more books from the Rotary Club, Rotary International Club. Um, so they've donated a couple of books for us. And as promised, the people of Bronfle come in full force to give a helping hand to their youth. The community say Pitlila Sirloyet, our legacy project. I'm so excited. We've split ourselves up. Me and Jabu are in charge of spray painting department kind of a thing. Octavia and Natasha, I know they're painting. Sam and Supposing Kosia are mainly on the sandpaper. They want to sand the tables. And then we're all going to categorize the books with the community's help. So that's really exciting. We just finished the sanding and the wiping of the papers of the shelves. So now what's happening is, yeah, we're starting with the, the painting. So we're because people take for granted why people don't value education. They think that people don't value education because it's a choice that they make. 
but people who actually do value education, they have resources and they have information and all that sort of thing, so they can value education. So hopefully this will help um, within this community specifically for the people here to value education. We just finished uh, painting the room and vanishing and arranging some of the books which we're going to put on the on the on the books on the bookshelves tomorrow uh, i think it was a long day uh, and now i know what success means those people that haven't found success that's because it smells like hard work and it's dressed in overalls it's been a heartfelt day and um, i think what's really cool is that the community has come out we haven't just come and done this on our own you know um, we've been there we've been working but we've done it with our that stay in the community and we want to thank them we want to thank the community for taking action you know people are excited about seeing the final product and opening it up tomorrow so yeah. <laughs> Day and the troops are ready for the reveal. We've just arrived at Itudeng now. What we're going to do is go into the reading room and finish sorting out the books and shelving them. Um, we also need to put up uh, some other decorations that we had for the room. Um, afterwards, hopefully by the time we finish school we'll be out so that we can get the kids for whom the reading room is for to be there for the opening and hopefully some of the community members as well. The library is complete um, and yeah, we're just feeling really happy. Um, it's been good to, to be part of this project and the people received it really, really well. So we're excited about that as well. Hopefully this is something we can come back in the future and visit again and see that it has been sustainable. It's still running well and yeah, it's been awesome to be part of it. And the learners gather for the opening. Listen guys, uh, thank you for coming. So uh, today we're here. Uh, we wanted to present to you uh, a library for you guys' school that we've refurbished, that you'll also use as a resource center alongside with the community. Né? Uh, this man is a professional motivational speaker. He'll introduce himself as he comes on. <coughs> Just give him a round of applause. Afternoon students. Afternoon. Uh, my name is Rilboni Mapia. It's my surname. There is this say that says, education is power. Let me tell you something. Education is not power. Education is a potential power. Education, you can use it only when you apply it in your life. Yes. This library can be here, but it will be useless if you guys don't use it. It, it, it will be in vain for, 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 for this library to be here if you guys don't use it. The first enemy of, of Yamutu, Molifatin Kuraskana educated. War unto you if you take your life and you rely on more no difference in Sahau. When your friends are in the class, when you are more and you are responsible for your future. Yes. There is no one at all answer like how Sanur, kill like a man, man, kill like a man, kill like a man. There will be somewhere else who says only one. Something you want to square. When days attack, friends are few. Let me tell you something, square is wrong. When days attack, there is no friends. <laughs> <laughs> The presentation went straight according to plan. It was really nice to see the reaction of the people and the teacher. Um, I think in terms of closing off the, the last chapter of this um, season, it was really beautiful uh, to see a bunch of six different individuals come through and leave something that will last hopefully for a very, very, very long time and continue to grow and prosper. And yeah, we'd just like to thank the community for coming through, thank the school for allowing them to help us, thank everybody that's given us an opportunity to grow and develop. I'm speechless in as far as this is concerned. We didn't expect this within a very short period of time. And to the team, uh, one day leaders, I'm saying thank you very much. And especially to also who contributed. It doesn't matter whether it was one book or whatever that we needed. 
the learners are excited and I did also highlight it to them and they're saying they're going to use this particular laboratory, library to their best to study and to empower themselves in as far as reading is concerned. Well done to our leaders for their hard work. But now though, I leave the judges to tie any loose ends with our contestants, of course, from this season. Shaga? Uh, thanks to me. Hi guys, uh, round of applause. Congratulations to you guys. You've done, I think you've done a great job with this library. Um, you know, I, and anything I think that gets people excited about reading, excited about uh, getting information for themselves is a phenomenal job. Uh, what I was curious about though is out of all of the challenges that you've seen, right, uh, over the past um, 12 weeks, what, what made you go here? I mean, I remember, you remember the access to education episode and the learners that I dropped out, you know, why not them? Why, why this particular project? Either one of you can answer. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't rush. I think for myself, Shaka, thank you for the question. I think that what we wanted to try and do is, obviously having been in this community in episode two or three, we looked at the general issues that were facing the community members as a whole, not just the school learners. And for, for, for that very reason, we wanted to target this school and in doing so the community as well. And we thought that by building this library and by promoting um, the concept of reading from a young age, as well as getting elders who are illiterate to be taught by learners of the high school how to read as well, that is what we wanted to leave behind. In this community, there are a number of issues facing it, unemployment, alcohol abuse, drug abuse, and so many other things. So why not target the school and in doing so, target the community as well. All right, thank you so much, Samantha. Catherine? Um, my question relates back to the episode on the environment. In that episode, you worked closely with the community and in fact, you left the community hanging after the work that you had done. What has happened thereafter? Have you gone back? Have you followed up? Has there been any traction there after that project? Okay. Octavia, you may take this one. Okay, so uh, in terms of has there been any traction, uh, I do want to give props to Jablani. Um, he's really handled the situation uh, in terms of going back to the community. Uh, we have gone back. They've actually worked with us on various projects, uh, such as the cultural dancing when they came through, uh, and they invited us to their Arbor Day as well. Um, so we have gone back. We are in constant communication with them. Uh, Jablani hosted an event uh, where he came through with cameras and he got pledges from uh, the, 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 the students and from community members saying that they're going to help out monthly at the Yaksuke River. So there has definitely been traction and there's been work around it to try and improve it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Leader Six. Linda? Thank you to me. Um, to you, Samantha. Yes. The proposal you had at the beginning is not here. Uh, you had said you wanted a subject heads to be in charge. Where are they? Yes, um, unfortunately they're not in the, the footage that our viewers have seen today, but they are definitely involved. Um, we've actually incorporated them into the system of, of making the library more sustainable by saying that um, themselves, community members, as well as the learners, all have an active and specific role to play in terms of how the library will function, when it will function, and also looking at the sustainability of it. So we definitely did incorporate them. Um, they will have specific hours given to them to, to fulfill in terms of overseeing um, the functioning of the library. So no, definitely educators needed to be involved. Yeah. Thank you so much, Samantha. Yershan? Well, firstly, uh, well done on the library and the focus on education. Uh, I think we can never do enough uh, to promote quality, relevant education. But last week you um, had Mum Anna's episode. Uh, any progress since then? Octavia, you may okay. take this one. So, uh, in terms of the progress with Mum Anna, uh, I've been in constant contact with her. Um, we found out that the main issue that she's having is land, which also gave me my idea for my debate last week. But um, what we figured out is since we can't get her land, she has a daughter 
and the daughter has a matric but has no employment. So um, we've been pursuing avenues of trying to get her back to school, either in an FET college or for her to redo her matric. And we're in constant work with her to just update her CV and look for casual work. Because currently they're just living on Mum Anna's uh, income, which is about 250 and at most 450 a week. So yes, there is progress there. We're still in communication with her. We're just looking for a sponsor trying to get her to school. Thank you so much, leaders. Thank you so much, judges, for those questions. Now, today we won't be having any debates whatsoever from our leaders as we felt that the contestants need to have their final word and to speak to you, their voters, for the very last time. But all this after the break. Welcome back to One Day Leader. We're very excited and anxious to be announcing our winner for the season. And I'm sure you at home are sitting on the edge of your seat. You cannot wait for us to announce who will, of course, be crowned the One Day Leader for season three. But before we get into that, let's see some of your comments at home and hear your feedback on who you're actually voting for this season. We have one here on Facebook from Huleng Mushwewu who says, wow, 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 Octavia Shabangu, you got to love him. Sensational, inspirational, and most importantly, he is a leader. And I have another, another one here who says, um, it's actually Pila Pilas, who says, please, 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 Team Samantha Bainon. She's a true leader. I like her and she's good. So please, guys, vote. And of course, you can continue voting for your favorite leader by SMSing Leader 5 or, of course, Leader 6 to the number 34020. But thank you so much for all your comments. And now we have asked the candidates to each prepare a one minute speech where they have their final plea to you at home, you, the voter, that is actually sending all these comments. So we'll start, of course, this one with Leader number five, Samantha Bain. On. And Sam, your time is now. Thank you, Suswam. I represent all South Africans. I love and I care about the people of this land as well as this continent. I'm proud to be a South African and more so I'm even proud to be a daughter of the African soil. Advocating for the human race, unifying people, empowering people. These are the notions I carry and the principles I live by each and every single day, even outside of one day leader. See, I don't just see your race, your gender, your culture, your ethnicity or whatever it is, but rather I see a person and I see people full of great potential. It is this very potential that needs to be afforded opportunities for maximization in the assistance of economic transformation for the majority of people in this country. I've stayed true to myself throughout this competition and I've stayed true to the cause which I represent and that is the cause of South Africa. Thank you so much, Samantha. A round of applause to Leader 5. And now we move on to Leader number 6, Octavia Shabango, to give us his final plea to you. Gentlemen. So there's this granny out there and her name is Eva Christens. And she's 67 years old and I had the privilege of meeting her on Thursday. And she said to me that every month she's been using 200 Rand of her pension money to vote for Leader 6. That is both the most privileged and inspirational story I've ever heard. And it's people like Eva and her granddaughter who's in attendance today uh, that have put me where I am. And I've realized that I've become the voice of the voiceless I'm the face of the forgotten, and we are the future. I stand here today to ask you to please put your trust in me one more time, because this is our future, and you, you, our cause will not be forgotten. I am not a messiah, but I am one of you, and we are the future. So be heard, SMS, the word leader, space six to 34020. Leader six to 34020. Thank you. Round of applause to leader number six. Heartfelt, please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to our candidates. Now, we've also invited some of South Africa's most influential individuals to form part of our audience. And now, of course, we give them a platform and a chance to chat and interact with our leaders. We'll start with Mr. JJ Dabani. Welcome back, sir. I understand you have a comment or a question for our leaders? Yes, thank you. Um, just to say that all of the six candidates really just demonstrate that we have a wealth of 
leadership and, and our country is in good hands and it's just a matter of, of that inspiration that is required. So you're all winners, but of course we have to have one for today. So Samantha, what in your view uh, is the one thing that South Africa must do in order to build youth leadership for our future? Thank you so much for the question, JJ, and it's good to see you again. Um, I'll speak frankly and not in parables, as you once said in, in one of the episodes. <laughs> I believe that although, yes, government is an institution or um, a platform to provide people with specific services, what I want to see is empowered youth an empowered youth that has access to opportunities so that they can build a better life for themselves and at the same time build a better future for South Africa. I believe in young people's potential. All I think that needs to happen is they need to be afforded the opportunities to maximize this, be active and make this country a fantastic place. I believe in it wholeheartedly. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, leader number five. Round of applause, please. Okay, we also have Bongi in our audience. Welcome back, Bongi Season 2 contestant. Thank you for having me, Dimit. Great Dimit. to have you. Please, question or comment? Um, so, as part of the top two, well done, Leader 6, as well as Leader 5, my question would be, if you had to go out today, what would be the message that you would share that is full of action to the youth of South Africa? So, she, she had a solution, but what is that message? If you had to tweet it, if you had to go on Facebook after you win, what is it that you would say? This is for Leader 6, right? Octavia. Octavia? Okay. Um, my message would be never surrender. Uh, the problem, I think, with us as the youth, we tend to give up when the going gets tough. But, like, when you're about to give up, you need to know that your goal is right there. The evidence of when you know how close you are to your goal is you're going to feel like you're going to faint but don't faint, because you're right there. So don't surrender, don't give up, carry on going, no matter what it takes. Thank you so much, Leo Six. All right, Siko, you have a question or comment? Welcome to One Day Leader. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I think I'm just gonna ask any of the leaders, uh, what, 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 what does it take to have the staying power? Because I think what, what, we, saw, um, what we require is not just you know, leaders who are here today, but we need people who are going to be there consistently. Um, I believe that leadership is not necessarily cameras and being a celebrity, but changing the environments that you're in. So in terms of staying power, what, 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 what is it that is required, um, especially for those who are not going to be on television, but who are leaders in their own communities? All right, ladies first. Thank you, Sipo. Um, I think for myself personally, it goes back to what are you standing for? What is your intention in terms of being a leader? Are you here to be a populist on TV or are you there to go out in the communities and in help people see their own potential? Because we face a crisis in this country where young people have lost hope. They've given up because of a system that isn't necessarily assisting them. Okay, so I believe that we need to go out, we need to encourage young people to believe in who they are, what they can become and what they can do for South Africa. For me, that's enough as a leader to know Absolutely. that I'm going into a community, I'm motivating other people that they have potential and can become great Absolutely. individuals. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much to leader number five. Thank you for your question, Sipo, as well. Well, of course, thank you so much to everyone that has joined us. Taking us through memory lane, they're having Bongi and Sipo back. But now our voting lines are officially closed. And I hope you have voted for your favorite candidate. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we've all been waiting for. The winner of One Day Leader Season 3, only after the break. Excitement and anxiety is brewing in studio, but ladies and gentlemen, I need to assure you that we have tallied the votes. But before we announce the winner for One Day Leader Season 3, we have Johan Dupisani from our previous season, Season 1 of One Day Leader, of course, with the One Day Leader book. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Tell us more about the book briefly, please. Uh, lots of talk on, on education this afternoon. Now, I can't say I've written the book on education, but I did write a chapter in it. Uh, the One Day Leader book, eight of the contestants from the previous two seasons, will be available in November this year. 
Alrighty, thank you so much, Johan, for coming. And as he said, the book will be available at the SABC for free, free be much, from the beginning of November. So please stay tuned to our website and social pages for further information. But now let's, of course, have our final word from Miss Linda and Yushin. Linda, we'll start with you. Any final words? Okay. Thank you, Tumela. Well, Samantha and Octavia, a well, well, well done for making it to the stage of the competition. Um, I just need you to constantly remember that in order order for us to create lasting positive change in our communities and the world around us, we need to be active citizens you know, within our grassroots. And so my, my plea to you is to take what you've learned, the skills that you've learned and the experience that you've learned throughout the journey and go out there and impact your communities. Thank you so Thanks. much, Linda. Thank you. Yershon? I must say I'm quite impressed that uh, both of you have spoken about uh, two interesting facets of leadership. Uh, individual character or personal development and national character or national development. And I think those two uh, will really be your, your success uh, as leaders in time to come. Some of us possess only individual or personal character, others uh, only national, but good, genuine leaders actually possess both. Uh, and so well done on that. Mm. And my, my second bit of advice uh, and from the NYJ would simply to say, be selfless, uh, strive for the well-being of your people as, as you've articulated and really hold yourself up as ideal human beings as you go back into your communities yes. and contribute as, as valuable leaders. All right, thank you so much. A round of applause to our sponsor guest. Thank you so much, judges. Now we're about to announce the winner of One Day Leader Season 3. Is it leader number five, Samantha Baynon? Or is it leader number six, Octavia Shabam? Well, now the votes are in and I would like to ask Mr. Nanti Manzi, an auditor from Price Waterhouse Coopers, who verified the results. So please bring us the envelope, sir. Aren't you nervous like me? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, I have the name. I have the leader in my hands. Who is it? Now, before we announce the winner, may I invite Yershon Pillay from the NYDA to just come over and have a word with me. Just to stand right next to me and let's have a conversation. <laughs> Always a pleasure. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Yershon, um, for the winner of One Day Leader Season 2, before I even envelope the envelope, what awaits the winner? A very exciting uh, opportunity to actually be part of the NYD family. Uh, the winner will have an opportunity uh, to shadow, uh, well, it could be fortunate or unfortunate, the chairperson of the NYD being myself, <laughs> uh, and actually get to experience um, leading uh, at a national level and actually delivering products, services, and programs for the young people of the country firsthand. Yep. It's a six month uh, program, okay. but they will also get the opportunity of having to donate to the Is community it? of their choice. Lovely. Um, a sum of money to help that community development project to succeed. All right, thank you so much. But I just want to remind you again that the second runner up will get 100,000 rands in cash and 50,000 rands to, of course, their favorite charity organization. Alrighty then, South Africa, it's time for us to now announce the winner who will get 300,000 rands in cash and 150,000 rands to a charity of their choice, including a trip to New York City and of course to Shadow, the chairperson of the NYDA. The winner of, N <laughs> of NYDA. <laughs> Okay, well, you are going to shadow the NYDA chairperson, but I'm just so nervous. The winner of One Day Leader Season 3 is... <sighs> the winner for One Day Leader Season 3 Leader 6 Octavia Shabazzi! <laughs> Octavia! Congratulations! Congratulations! Any final words, briefly? Um, I'd like... 
Final. Final. Um, I'd just Quickly. like to say thank you to everyone, but uh, this is not my win. I'd like to thank God. It, it yes. starts with God, and thank you for Ted one. Thank you so much. Correct. Thank you, South Africa. My name is Tumela Mututuani, leader. Six Octavia is the winner. We'll see you on season four. Congratulations. Goodbye. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much.